to look back at the last Forge FC contest. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. Here is Match and Review. My word, what a rocket. With Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Hello, Forge fans. Final whistle in Ottawa. Forge FC with a 1-0 win over Atletico Ottawa. And um, we are live, by the way. We are live on YouTube. Our first time going live with the match in review. And good timing on our part, because what a match it was. Forge FC returning to Ottawa uh, for the first time since that CPL final last year, which as we all know, ended up in Forge's favor. This one, a lot of similarities in that big game Dave showed up and in a lot of ways stole three points for Forge FC. We're going to get to it, though, because I don't know that I've ever seen a tale of two halves quite like this. All right, let's get started here. For starters, Forge FC coming out. With a traditional 4-3-3 formation, although it looked a lot different once the ball was kicked off and uh, Forge took possession for the first time, it was more of a 3-4-1-2. It was, it, it, put it this way, when I saw this, the, the lineup um, ahead of the match, I, I kind of wrote down the lineup, kind of what I projected the formation would be based on what we've been used to. And I might as well have just rolled it up and tossed it out the window because... Um, once the match started, it was nothing like I expected. Pasias, Poku, and Campbell up top, right? Different than what we've seen before. Becker and Jensen. Now, I have to dig a little deeper, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time both Becker and Jensen started a match together. So both Becker, Jensen in the midfield with Ashton Yodi Janssen, and then Malik. Uh, it was Malik. It was Matusala. Dominic Samuel, and Malcolm Duncan making his first ever start for Forge FC at the back. But once Forge took possession, Duncan moved up, and it was essentially Malik, Matusala, and Samuel uh, playing defense. And um, I, I'm kind of peeking over. At, I have one soccer playing in the corner here as, as the match just finished between Forge and Ottawa. Tristan Henry being interviewed as the man of the match. It I, I can't even... If you didn't have an opportunity to watch this match, I don't know that I can put into words how great Tristan Henry was. He set a personal record, CPL record for himself for saves in a match. I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but but I have to. It was that kind of game. Um, eight saves for Tristan Henry. All of them came in the second half. That's his personal record, and it was an unbelievable performance. Uh, but we have a lot lot to get to. So first of all, um, Malcolm Duncan, first ever pro start for Forge FC, had the best scoring opportunity to start the match. Poku, unbelievable cross under duress. Duncan couldn't quite connect with his head. Uh, there was some movement on the ball and he couldn't quite get to it, but already an early opportunity. And Kwesi Poku, noticeable throughout that first half. Uh, his vision, his poise, a guy that big, a six foot three attacker is not supposed to be as quick as Poku is, but he's so good on the ball. His vision is incredible. His, his ability to create plays for his teammates um, and also to make great plays defensively. You know, he has experience playing fullback under Bobby Smirniotis. And so you saw some of that. His hustle, his work rate, getting back on defense and breaking up plays and uh, some steals and some tackles as well. 14th minute. I bring this up. Ali Bassett was warned uh, for multiple, let's call them tactical fouls, just kind of reaching and grabbing players as, as they try to run across. This was a big match for Ottawa. If you listen to the, the match day preview, Gordon Smith, the color commentator for Atletico Ottawa matches on TSN 1200, joined us um, as he does almost every time these two clubs meet. And we learn something new every time he joins us, but he talked about how important this match was for Ottawa. They had not won a game at home. They had a minus two goal differential going in at home. Uh, they were in seventh place going into this match. After going to the final last year, after winning the, you know, after finishing in first place for the regular season, surprising everybody, and then going on that run, making it to the final before losing to Forge. 
Yes, there was a lot of turnover, but still there were some expectations. You know, when you have a brand new league, because, and I know we're at some point we can stop calling it brand new, but even five seasons in, that's not enough. Especially when you count those two COVID seasons, they were in bubbles. When you're looking at building a brand and building a league from scratch, which is, I mean, it's, it's virtually impossible to do. And here we have the Canadian Premier League forge fortunate enough at least forge fans um fortunate enough to have a winning club a reason to keep coming back for some of the other clubs it's hard to to get your footing in a market as a brand new sports team so especially this time of year it's you know the weather's getting nice you're gonna have to you're gonna have to convince fans to skip the cottage you know um on a weekend when it's 25 degrees and stay home and and watch a soccer match inside of a stadium for a couple of hours. That's not easy to do under any circumstances and as a league that still has to establish itself in a lot of ways. For Ottawa, they had something going last season. And then this year, you know, seventh place, minus two goal differential, haven't won yet at home. This was a big one for them. And so when this match started, and, and, and when I see the reason I bring this up is, you know, Ollie Bassett with some of those tactical fouls, maybe doing a little too much, maybe playing scared to lose because he's a guy who has performed, right? I mean, he, he was tied for the league leading goals coming into this match. So Ali Bassett has been, you know, Ali Bassett for the most part without a ton of help around him. And then when you see a guy like Ali Bassett, who's not really known for that kind of... Uh, and then it wasn't that it was overly physical or dirty or cheap or anything like that. But some of the tactical fouls, you, sometimes you're playing a little scared to lose. Um, so I thought that that stood out. First half, Forge moved the ball with absolute ease. Ottawa back on their heels. Forge probably could have had a couple of goals. The, the issue again, getting into that final third, just it just wasn't there. It, opportunities were there. Just guys couldn't connect. Um that 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 clinical finish that we talk about so much just was absent again in that first half and you know it forced essentially you, you what forge tried to do is now consider this their their primary attackers in this one i mentioned poku pasias campbell to start the game poku 63 pasias 61 campbell uh 6 feet but also around 195 Right, this is a guy that could probably play linebacker for the Tiger Cats if he uh, wanted to make the switch. Big bodies up top for Forge, and they were well aware. We got a lot of attempts to play the ball over the top and make things difficult for Ottawa's center backs having to defend these big guys one on one in the area. Um, and so Forge challenged them, and um, again, Ottawa did an okay job. But really, a lot of this comes down to Forge's um, execution in that final third. In the 33rd minute, Kyle Becker, probably the, the best clean opportunity in terms of actually getting a shot attempt off. It didn't hit the target, but he was given space. He took it from about 30 yards out, just missed on a beautiful shot. It just dipped at the end. It was exactly what you want from that range, um, but it was just a little off the target. But you love to see it. You kind of make a statement when you start just taking those shots and you keep the defense honest, a team like Ottawa who was sitting back a lot of the time and giving space. That's a, that's a bit of a, that's an eye opener for you. If you're Ottawa defending when you see that attempt from Borges and Forge dominated the midfield throughout that first half. One of the keys was middle mastery, right? Battle in the trenches. Uh, Forge has a decisive advantage in their midfield. Um, and it showed dominant dominant in the midfield everything going forge's way i mean uh copious notes were taken by me and really it's just kind of the same it's a lot of attempts a lot of possession they go into half with nothing to show for it though only one shot hit the target for forge and that is um and that's with 62 percent possession right you, you need more on target there and really the four attempts but even that was kind of low um they needed more to show for it after having 62 percent of the possession um you know 304 passes from forge in the first half alone 190 from ottawa um touches in the other team's area eight eight touches for forge in ottawa's 
in the box. And um, again, just one shot on target. So that was the theme. Ottawa was so inept in that first half. He, here's the, um, in terms of expected goals as part of these advanced analytics, expected goals, 0.45 for Forge. Ottawa, 0.02, almost zero. You never see that expected goals. Now, everything I just told you about the first half, you can you can pretty much discard all of it. Second half, completely different story. And after that first half, by the way, I had these thoughts. I even just, the note that I took was Ottawa fans, yikes. That's what I'm saying. If I made it down to the stadium that day and I passed up this up, you know, a day to just enjoy the fresh air, maybe go, I don't, I don't, whatever, whatever. Listen, whatever you do in Ottawa, when the weather's nice and you want to get out, whatever you could have done, could have been had, but you chose to come to this match to watch Atletico Ottawa, despite their struggles, right? You decided to be a, a supporter um, and you were given a horrible first half performance from Atletico Ottawa. So yikes indeed. However, I don't know what was said at halftime, but um, a completely different Ottawa team in the second half. Way more energy to start the half. That was evident right off the opening kickoff. Ottawa finally uh, had their first shot on target in the 51st minute. Bassett from 40 yards out. And then it became the Tristan Henry show. So remember these numbers, okay? 51st minute. Remember that. That was Ottawa's first shot on target. Minute 51. 53rd minute, Henry stopped a clean shot from about eight yards out and then stopped the follow-up right after that. So now he has three stops. All Ottawa now. 57th minute. Um, Forge finally had a sustained attack with some possession. But just two minutes later, Tristan Henry got his hands on a shot from uh, set on a free kick. Labeled. Just under the bar, Henry extends and is able to punch it over the top of the goal. There's another stop for Tristan Henry. 62nd minute. Dos Santos in all alone. Essentially a breakaway. There was some back pressure, so you know he didn't have a ton of time to do whatever he wanted. Henry recognized that Dos Santos might have been a little rushed because he had some back pressure. Henry comes flying out of uh, off his line and uh, he charged to the top of the area. Made a brilliant stop. At this point, shots on target. Ottawa has six. From the 51st minute to the 64th. So in a span of like 13 minutes or so, they had six shots after having none in the first half. Now Forge, 67th minute, they start making their changes. Borges comes in. Schwanier comes in. And just let's just take a moment to reflect on that for a moment. If you're Forge FC. The ability in the second half of the second half to bring in Tristan Borges, David Schwanier, two of the most prolific players this league has ever seen. Fresh legs. Jensen comes off, Basias comes off, and now it's Borges, Campbell, and David Schwanier as your three attackers. 72nd minute. Tristan Henry makes his seventh stop. His personal record broken. Seven saves in a match. It is, it's a record for him. And he did it all between the 51st and 72nd minute. So in a 20-minute span, he had stopped more attempts than he had in an entire game throughout his entire CPL career. And he's played a lot of matches. I don't know what the exact number is. but We know that he reached his 100th match milestone last year. So... Um, he's well over a hundred now. And it really, and, and again, it's in a span of like 20 minutes. Um, by the way, he wasn't done yet. 74th minute again, forge the luxury, the depth luxury that they have on come Sissoko, arguably the best, uh, box to box midfielder in the CPL. He comes in, replaces Boku, Ashton Morgan. Veteran fullback, one of the better fullbacks in the CPL. He comes on. Uh, Malcolm Duncan comes off. By the way, Duncan, his first perform, his first uh, start in the CPL for Forge FC. Um, admirable job, all over the ball, a lot of energy, a lot of pace, 
uh, looked dangerous, had, had some opportunities also to uh, early in the match. He could have opened the scoring uh, on a header that just kind of got away from him. So uh, promising performance from Duncan. Forge will be happy with that. 84th minute, Campbell comes off. Kane comes on, makes his CPL debut, and he would play a role in Forge's three points. 91st minute after that half of football, Ottawa playing maybe their best, the best half of football we've ever seen them play against Forge. Not maybe, I would say considerably, maybe by a wide margin, best half of football we've ever seen from Ottawa. And this is where at the end of the day, as much as we like to say that, yes, you know, effort, determination, all of those kind of, um, you know, X factors in, in a match, they're important. They are a great equalizer. But at the end of the day, sometimes the team with more talent, they, they need, they require less opportunity. And um, Forge made Ottawa pay. One mistake. Ottawa failed to track Chouanier on a counter. The ball went from Becker to Chouanier to Borges to Kane. He put it through the area. Chouanier from an impossible angle with a keeper completely out of sorts. A uh, bit of a scramble for him. And Chouanier from a ridiculous angle scores, breaking more heart the same way he broke hearts last year in the CPL final in Ottawa. He broke the hearts of Ottawa fans again. And um, that would be the eventual winner, but not before. Not before Tristan Henry, <laughs> because why not? He was already going to be the man of the match at this point. But just to secure that, he made a stop on, on his goal line in the 93rd minute with a ton of traffic. Just, just a reaction save. I, I don't know what his... I, honestly, I, I, as I've been going through these saves, I'm trying to kind of determine what the best one was. I don't know. I, they were all unbelievable. I mean, you you could ask ten different people and and get you know eight different answers. Um, that was those were the final shots. By the way, shots on target eight three in favor of Ottawa. Shot attempts even twelve twelve, but uh, expected goals one point three three. For Ottawa, 1.16 for Forge. So the expected goals for Atletico Auto, 1.33. The end up with zero. Tristan Henry, um, easily, easily the man of the match on in, in this one. So that's your final. If you have an opportunity to go back and watch the match in its entirety, I recommend you do so on One Soccer, Fubo TV, wherever. Um, I guess those are really your only two options. Um and if not that, at least go back and watch the highlights. And it was an historic performance by Tristan Henry, the best goalkeeper this league has ever seen for reasons that probably have to do with Forge being as good as they are and possessing the ball as much as they do. When a team is that good, sometimes the keeper gets overlooked, despite the fact that he, I mean, the amount of big saves he's been called upon to make over the years. Um you know, it gets a little lost because you look at possession and you go, oh, well, 60% possession for Forge. You know, how 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 much do the keeper really need to keep them in the match? Um, in this one, though, you hate to say it if you're Forge, but uh, yeah, I mean, some game-saving saves for Henry. That's what he's paid to do, but he he did it to a, even at a rate that better than expected because some of those had no business not going in for Atletico Ottawa, but Henry... Henry saved the day. And that's what, and when you're forged, now think about this stretch. You had your Wednesday match against Montreal, all right? Canadian championship match. That was a tough one. You fly to Ottawa for a Saturday match. They haven't even been home yet. Now they're going to go home. They're going to play York on Wednesday. Then they're going to play again on Friday. So Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Friday. Four matches in a span of about, um, excuse me, they don't play for, they play Saturday. Okay, so the following Saturday. So still, in about 12 days, they're playing four matches. Um, difficult stretch for any club. You're going to need your subs. You're going to need your keeper. You're going to need everyone contributing. And in this one, they did. And Henry is one of those players. Like, like everyone else on the team, he has a role. And he played it absolutely perfectly today. All right. That's your match interview. And that's your final from Ottawa. one nothing. 
Forge FC, they will remain uh, at the top of the CPL table. Pacific was kind of nipping at their heels a little bit, but now some uh, some separation for the time being. And, and we'll see how Pacific does in their match. But Forge right now, at least breathing easy, going into the week in top spot. Keep it locked. Onto the Forge Audio Network. Plenty more coming up this week. Whenever I say we have a lot of matches coming up, kind of in a, in a condensed time frame, it just means uh, more content for you. So match day preview coming up. You have your three keys to the match accompanying that. And then um, we'll, 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 we'll recap that, that midweek game against, against York. But for now, we can enjoy this one. A victory over Ottawa once again at TD Place Stadium. All right. Hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.